Welcome back everyone, Dan Vicky here, and today we're talking about one of my favorite large language models out there, and that is Google Gemini Flash 2.0. Now I really love this because it's very fast, it's very accurate at what it does when it comes to writing and coding, and most importantly for me, it's very inexpensive. So if you are going to use a large language model in an API that is taking a lot of throughput, cost is a very important thing to take a look at and the price per tokens is very good when you compare it to other models out there. So I think uh, Google Gemini's Flash 2.0, you'd be hard pressed to find a better model to use in your applications. Now, I've done a video on this, on how to integrate this in Spring AI. One of the things that came out of that video, a lot of comments that I got was, I have to use this Vertex API where I have to log in with my Google credentials and it's not as easy as other ones, where I just wanna use an API key. So today we're gonna to talk about that. We're gonna give you a, a nice easy way to use uh, just an API key with Google Flash, and then we'll talk about uh, what's going on as we move forward. All right, so what do I mean by that? So if we go over to the Spring AI documentation and we look at the um, chat client, the AI models, the chat models, and we go down and look at Google, there is Google Vertex API. So I did an overview of this in my video, of kind of understanding the different offerings that Google has when it comes to like AI Studio, Google Vertex, Google Gemini for the consumer side. So go ahead and take a look at that video if you want. But this gives you a way to get started with Google uh, Vertex AI Gemini Chat, and you can use all of the uh, foundation models there. Um, but I just want to use an API key. How do I just input an API key and use that? Well, let's talk about a couple of things. When you go over to AI Studio and you wanna get an API key, you can go ahead and get an API key and use it in a curl request. But if you go ahead and look at the API quick start documentation, you will see that there are SDKs for Python, Node, REST, and Go, but Java is missing from there. And that is why there is no support for that in Spring AI yet. Now there is a Java AI out there, a Google Gen AI Java SDK. It has not yet hit uh, 1.0. We can see that it's still in a pre-release. So I think until uh, this gets more mature, I think this until this gets to a proper place, uh, we won't see it in Spring AI. Now, I don't know, I haven't talked to uh, Mark or Christian about this yet, but I imagine at some point uh, this will come there. So we gotta wait for that to get just that API access. But some good news on that front, I saw someone tweet this out and Google now has open AI compatibility. So it says here, Gemini models are accessible using the open AI libraries along with the REST API by updating three lines of code in your Google Gemini and using your Google Gemini API key. Now this means that in Spring AI, we have support for the open AI SDK. So we can go ahead and use OpenAI's SDK and talk to the Google Flash 2.0 models. So this is really exciting. Now I have a repo here. You can go ahead and take a look at this. I'll put this in the description below. You can look at how we build this out, but we're gonna build this together, all right? So all you need is a API key. So if you come over to AI Studio and you say get API key, you can go ahead and use that in this Spring app today. So we're gonna head over to our favorite place, start.spring.io and create a new application. We're gonna go ahead and say this is dev.danvega. We'll just call this Flash. Uh, we are using JDK 23. I'm gonna pick out the web dependencies. And then instead of choosing Google Vertex here, I'm going to choose the OpenAI API. So that's gonna bring in the OpenAI Spring Boot Starter. So with that, I have everything I need. I can go ahead and generate this. This is going to download a zip file. I can go ahead and open this in whatever IDE or text editor uh, I'm most proficient in. Uh, for me, that's gonna be IntelliJ. So I think we have everything we need. Let's go ahead and open this and write some code. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is come into source main resources and go to application.properties. And we need to fill in a few properties here. So let me go ahead and start with these two. I'm gonna just copy and paste these in. These are in the repo. So we are setting our base URL. Instead of talking to OpenAI, we are setting our base URL to Google's generative language .google, Google's APIs.com. And then the completion path for that is V1 beta OpenAI chat completions. Now, I just got this from the documentation that I just showed you. So that's all you need to get started. Then I'm gonna come in here and say, 
Uh, I'm going to set my open API key, my open AI API key. That's actually going to be my Google Gemini API key, which I'll in, enter in a second. And then we're going to set our model. In this case, I'm talking to Gemini 2.0 Flash. Now I'm going to pause this and go ahead and input my uh, key because I don't have a, an environment variable set up yet. Uh, but I'll go ahead and input this and then we'll move on. All right, so I just want a simple application here that talks to uh, Google's Gemini Flash 2.0. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna create a new bean. We are gonna use the command line runner because this is going to start after the application context is started up. And at this point, because we're only talking to one model, we'll get a default check client created for us. So we'll say check client dot builder and we'll call this builder. And then I'll return args. And in here, I'll create a client. I'll say client is equal to builder.build. And that should give me a client. Now what I want to do is say, hey, client, we're going to go ahead and prompt. And inside the prompt, I can pass in a user message now. I'm going to say, tell me an interesting fact about Google. All right, and then all we're gonna do is we're gonna make a blocking call. We're going to get the uh, content back, which is going to give us the string response, and I'll create a variable called response from that. From there, I can go ahead and output response. I can go ahead and run this application, and if everything works, we should have a response from Google Gemini. Google was originally called Backrub before it became the global tech giant we know today, Larry Page and Sergey Brin. The Sergey Brin, the founders, initially named their search engine Backrub in 1996. So there's a little bit more, but I'm not going to read it all. That is as how easy it is to get up and running using Google Gemini's Flash 2.0 using the OpenAI SDK. Now we're not gonna stop there. I'm actually going to comment this out though so we don't use that. And what I'm gonna do is add a little bit more because um, in the documentation, they said that they had um, some other endpoints. They had an endpoint to be able to uh, list out all of the models. So if you're not sure what models are available in Google, um, we can go ahead and write a quick app to test that endpoint out. So I'm gonna create a Java class Let's go ahead and call this our Gemini model controller. And this is going to be a REST controller. And we are going to need a couple things in here. So first, I'm going to need a logger. So let's say logger. That'll get us a logger. Cool. I'm going to need that API key. So let me say private string Gemini API key. Because we are actually just going to use a REST client here because we don't have support for some of those endpoints, um, because this is a different endpoint on the Google side and not used in the OpenAI's SDK, right? So I am going to say, we're gonna get this through the at value annotation, and this is going to come from uh, spring.ai.openai.api key. So that'll give us our API key. And then I need a REST client to talk to this. So I'll just say REST client. Now again, this is because the, um, the SDK for Java for Google is not out yet, uh, I imagine, but I don't have any information on this, that at some point when that SDK is ready to go, that'll be baked into Spring AI and we can just kind of use Spring AI to do this. But for now, I'm just going to use a REST client to talk to that. So um, REST client. But again, we don't need this. We can do all the normal things that we're doing with Spring AI and talk to it and get a structured output back or whatever we need, right? So I'm just kind of testing this out. I'm going to add a constructor parameter here. Uh, this is the um, builder. So let's say uh, dot builder. REST client, um, and then this is going to, let's just do this. Let's stay consistent here, folks. I'm gonna call this builder. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to say builder, uh, whoops, sorry, builder dot, and I wanna set a base URL, uh, dot base URL. And this is going to be that same URL that we looked at before. So the base URL is going to be this generative language, right? Uh, dot Google APIs dot com. And then we're going to go ahead and build a REST client from that. So now we can create an endpoint. 
let's go ahead and create an endpoint. We'll call this uh, slash models. So from there, we want to get a list of something back. Let's call this a Gemini model, and we'll call this models. All right, we'll satisfy this in a second. We need to create something called a Gemini model. So let's go ahead and create a record. And this Gemini model is basically going to return back a collection of models that has an ID, an object, and an owned by, right? Let's fix that, Dan. Okay, so, so far, so good. Now we get a list of Gemini models back. And now we need to basically make a list of, well, we need to make a call out to that URI. So let's do that. Let's say um, we want to use the REST client. We'll call the get and we'll pass in the URI. So this is kind of that chat completions, right? V1 beta open AI models. And then what we want to do is we want to set a header. So we're going to say that this is the authorization header. And this is going to be a bearer plus a space plus our Gemini API key, right? We're going to retrieve that. And then we're going to turn this into an entity. That entity, we're going to create basically a list or basically a response that comes back of those Gemini models. So let's say, let's call this a model list response dot class. Let's go ahead and set a variable there. And that should return to that and we'll call this a response, okay? So now what we need to do is actually create this thing. And this is going to be a record. Okay, and then all this is gonna have is a object. And again, I'm modeling this off the documentation, the response JSON that comes back. And that will contain a list of Gemini models and we'll call this data. All right, so now to return that, all I need to do is let's say return our response dot get body data. So that will return our list of Gemini models. So if everything works out correctly, we should be able to run this application. We should be able to go over to a terminal. I'm using a command line tool called HTTPIE. So uh, HTTP, and then I just call 8080 and then the endpoint. You could do this in the browser too, that would work. So I'm just gonna call slash models. And we do have an error. Let's find out what's going on here. Um, 400 bad request, uh, our API key is not valid. Please pass a valid API key. So let's see what's going on here. Ooh, that's what's going on here. That should work now. Let's try and rerun this again uh, and run slash models. And now you can see we get a list of models. Each of these models has an ID, an object, and an owned by, although owned by seems to be null. That's probably just, we could probably change the um, JSON property. Not a big deal for this property. I think it's fixed in the uh, final repo. But if you're curious of what models you have access to, these are the models. So you can see um, there's the 1.5 models. Um, like, let's go down a little bit. Now we get into, so there's the 2.0 flash experimental, 2.0 flash. There should be a light. So yeah, the light is even more inexpensive than the flash version, so flash light. So just a lot of really great models coming out of Google these days. I'm really impressed with everything they're doing. I love all of their products now that I kind of got my head wrapped around them. And if you want to use them in your application, you can. You can just go through and use the OpenAI SDK and everything should work. Now, again, be on the lookout for that official Google Gemini Java SDK. Uh, as soon as there's support for that, we could probably do some more things. Uh, but for now, if you wanna get up and running with just an API key, really easy to do here in Java and Spring AI. 
I hope you learned something new today. I got really excited when I saw this tweet and I thought I'd put together this demo because I know a lot of you guys were asking about how to use an API key with Google um, in Spring AI. So I had a lot of fun putting this together. If you learned something new today, friends, do me a big favor, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding.